together because of Easter this weekend. Oh, don't worry about it. You have a baby with you. Yeah. There's a baby. That's fine. It's totally fine with me. Is this your baby, I'm guessing? Yeah. Yeah, he's mine. <laughs> Not just some I just didn't have some random baby. <laughs> just want to make sure. I'm, I'm a I'm a stay at home dad, so Oh, okay. Well, cool. Well, congratulations. That's an awesome job. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. What's the, what's your, what's the baby's name here? His name's Cassius. Ha- Cassius. Hi, Cassius. Welcome to your first. Is this Cassius's first pro wrestling interview? Yes, it is. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, this is good content. Can we just you include this? Is that fine? I don't know if you're going to. Yeah, I don't care. Okay, great. Well, the voice in the background right now uh, who just introduced his baby Cassius uh, to the show uh, is uh, he could be seen as part of Ring of Honor. He also serves as the host of Tony Deppin's Beer House. It's uh, Tony Deppin. Tony, thank you very much for taking the time to chat with me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm happy just to be able to sit here and plug my upcoming show for WrestleMania weekend. You know, like it's going to be a lot of fun, but we'll see how it goes. Well, I don't know if you can see, but my name, Houseman, it's spelled H-A-U-S, right? So yes. any time, Dan Housen, Beer House, whatever, I, I feel connected to this show. And I also brew beer, by the way. There's a bad... So do I. Oh, really? I'm opening up a brewery next month. Well, I am not that cool. <laughs> like, well, wait. Well, then let's get into this here real quick. We'll do a little pro. We'll do a little beer chat before we get into the pro wrestling stuff. What's your uh, What's your preferred uh, uh, brew? What kind of style do you like to to make? Well, obviously, everybody's really into the IPAs and stuff like that. But like, I'm I'm literally like, it makes me feel weird saying right now. But I'm trying to watch my like my weight and try to put what I'm putting in my body. So like I I'm just been going towards more like loggers and pilsners right now because they're lower calories, and I, I I actually enjoy them too. But I I really enjoy like IPAs, double triple, regular single IPAs. It doesn't really matter. I used to really be heavily into the fruited sour stuff, but after I got COVID, I really started to not enjoy them as much. So Are you it like permanently affected your palate? The COVID did. Is that what I I honestly can't taste right now. Like I haven't had my taste buds for five months wow yeah so like i really can't taste anything but like i can taste like the adjuncts in a fruited sour but it just uh, rubs me the wrong way like i don't know what the the taste does not do anything for me huh that's a bummer man my favorite thing recently has been making mussels not these but like the you know the ones in the shells uh with a nice sour beer gauss beer uh sauce it's really delicious yeah, I, I prefer traditional sours, but nobody makes them, so oh. got to gotta stick with those kettle sours. Hey, maybe you should start a brewery or something. Do whatever the heck you want. So wait, you have an actual? You're starting a brewery. So this is you have like a facility for this? Yeah. Brewery? Where? Wait, where? Where? Tell me more about this. I'm very interested. It's in Pottsville, Pennsylvania. I'm opening up with two of my close friends because we started home brewing a couple of years ago, and we entered one homebrew competition. The first one we entered, and we were only brewing for like three, four months at the time. And we only, and it was the first time we brewed two of these beers and one was in a stout. The other was an IPA and we couldn't enter the IPA because we uh, br- uh, brought it last minute, but uh, the stout got second place. It was like 36 out of 40 that we got Okay. for the score. And then uh, the judges were coming around just like trying everybody's beers and they tried the IPA They're like, Oh, which one's this? Like the cat in the, in the category. I was like, Ed, we didn't enter it. He goes, Oh, that's a shame. I was just like, damn it so we just started doing all these festivals and stuff and people were really enjoying it. So we're like when you guys open up and we just started kind of running with it so and here we are a month and a half out from opening okay uh, uh follow up uh what's the name of the brewery it's called pilgaroo brewing uh it's the uh it's a stream in our local area and it connects all the cities that my friends and i are from that and because like we're not all from the same area but this stream kind of connects all the cities that we were uh we grew up in Okay, gotcha. And what's distribution like? I'm here in Illinois. Any chance I'll be able to see this anytime soon? Uh, uh, no, well, we're we're not big enough in system yet. We don't really because like that. That's where you don't lose. When, uh, make a lot of money in distro. Like it'll be like, we'll do four packs and stuff every so often and stuff like that. So like any type of getting a beer from ours would just be like, either you know we illegally ship it to you because we we're not gonna. We're not going to pay for those rice. They're expensive. I've spent, I've sent some bottles of olive oil to a couple of friends over the years, you know? Oh yeah. I, I constantly ship beer back and forth. So like, it won't be the first time I've done that. We'll, we'll do a, maybe we'll do a beer exchange. We'll figure that out the year. I'm not going to complain about that. Um, so, uh, what, how, so kind of pivot into this. So like, how does beer culture compare to pro wrestling culture? Like, how do you see the two cultures being similar or just dis- different? 
I feel like they're very similar now, uh, in today's world, at least, because a lot of people um, are not happy with the product of big beer, like uh, the Budweiser, the Bud Light, the Miller Lights. And they're, we're gearing towards this uh, shift in culture, in my personal opinion, that we're trying to go back to a mom and pop style, uh, like uh, culture or a community base where like, you know, we just want something that's our own. Yeah, and yeah. we're going to support the local businesses. And then in wrestling, uh, more people are shifting away from a mainstream uh, wrestling um, viewership like a WWE and such because they're unhappy with the product. And they're finding the happiness in wrestling that they love with WWE in independent wrestling. And yeah. they're supporting us like crazy, especially during a pandemic. Anyone that complains, any wrestler that complains about uh, the way fans are supporting us now then they can go get fucked because it's been an entire year and these fans have enabled me to not have to go back to work yet yeah wow so that's that's awesome man i i totally agree with you and you're like tapping right into my veins of like my favorite kind of conversation because you're 100 percent right man we're like the the beer business and the wrestling business are moving towards those smaller indie things people are getting to pick out their niches i mean you've got this really unique show there's a lot of really kind of unique shows like if you're looking for uh, Effie's Big Gay Brunch or, or For the Culture or Spring, you know, everybody's got these little flavors right now. It, it, they used to say you got to put all this uh, flavors, you know, of ice cream, and, you know, so everybody can enjoy it on a single show. Now I kind of feel like chocolate's got its own show. Vanilla's got its own show. Strawberry's got its own show. I don't know if that resonates with you. Yeah. You know, and the, and, but that's not like, yeah, it. I think what does make, like, this is a different example just because of like we're doing Mania Week, but like normally all the shows have a, a good diverse. Uh, selection right. like a, just a one-off show but like now that we're down to meaning because it's there's so many shows and stuff if everybody runs with the same gimmick of hey we're super diverse with our card it, it wouldn't resonate with the fans as well yeah but the fact that you have their own your own subcultures of of shows that helps a lot yeah yeah 100 percent. well uh so tony talk to me about beer house b-i-e-r house h-a-u-s uh what what is this what is the feel of this show what are you going for with this show tony honestly i don't have m much of uh an insight on it it's just i just want to have fun with it um uh, obviously due to a, a situation that occurred a show was pulled off of mania week and they wanted the time slot filled so iwtv asked me to uh book a show and preferably with all the people that were on the last show like I wanted to give these people a payday. I'm trying, there's a GoFundMe. I'm trying to hope to get enough money to pay all these people because I, I don't know how intense it's going to be, you know, like, but at the end of the day, uh, we're, I, I'm hoping we have good viewership on IWTV and I hope we all have a lot of fun and have a kick-ass show. It's honestly the only thing I care about at this point, because that's all we can hope for. <laughs> so, you know, so so for fans that don't know, and we won't mention the names who should not be named here, but what, what you're describing is there was a promotion where the owner was outed for some very heinous activity, and all of a sudden, the promotion that is it was pretty notable for its area is gone, and all these people are now kind of left in the dust. Did I, did I get that right? Yep, pretty much. Hit the nail on the head with that. Man, like, I mean, how do you, I mean, again, without having to, like, reference it, like, what, how do you feel when you see this kind of stuff happen in, in pro wrestling and see these people kind of left in the cold or or feeling, like, attached to it for having worked for somebody like that? You know? Well, first of all, I, I, I knew the guy for, like, six years, and I never knew his, that this was a fake name, like, at all. Oh, wow. I, and I know people that were friends with him for 10 plus years, and, he entered like he told his parents to to work with it too like so like he was just like his he had a credit card that said his name his big name oh my god like, yeah that's so a, that's illegal <laughs> yeah well, so like i was like fair. a little like pushed off about that but then also it's like when it came, uh, came push to shove i'm just like you know what uh these people that were on the show they need a show like they lost the booking. Some of it was their own only booking. So I was like, fuck it. Let's try it. Yeah, dude, that that was such a that was such a shit situation. Everybody was put in there, man. And like, that's awful to hear that you like, I mean, you you, I, and you're not the first person I've talked to because we just went through the Me Too movement, you know, where these people that like knew people as friends and stuff and you find out this stuff. Dude, that that sucks, man. I'm very sorry to hear that, you know. Oh, it's not like I was friends with them, but like, you know, I was acquaintance with them. Like I saw him. I always talked to him like, you know, hey, how are you doing? But like 
never like in depth on conversation. And it made me feel weird then. Cause like when I had this little man right here, he messaged me he was like, Oh, congratulations. Your son's beautiful. And I'm just now looking back, I'm just like, Ugh, all right. I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk about this anymore. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you got a six way pub crawl match. Uh, what is that? <laughs> it, it was just an interesting name to come up with. I didn't want, I, I wanted, I didn't want things to just be basic. I just wanted like a clever name. And, you know, like, obviously most people, like, all all scramble matches are car crashes. So why the hell not? Like, cause most of the guys will be crawling out after the match anyways. Sure. So I'm guessing you're going to infuse beer somehow into these matches or match. The well, the match. whole thing's at a brewery. Yeah, exactly. So, like, I didn't know. Okay. I have some, a little, like, little fun things planned. Like, they're not going to be over the top. It's not like I'm going to have, like, the Sandman come out or some shit like that. But, like. I I'm, like some small little segments that I have with uh, uh, like El Drunko is going to be on the show and stuff like that. So like, I'm I'm trying to think of some. I'm just trying to make it not a traditional wrestling show and just try to be, make it fun. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, well, uh, you're not just doing this show, and this show sounds awesome, and I'm super interested in your brewery. I love meeting brewers. I uh, but uh, you obviously are making waves in Ring of Honor. Um. Yeah, what's uh, what's uh, what's your status like with Ring of Honor right now? Like, are, are you? I, I I was looking online. Are you full time with them, or like, what, what's your deal with Ring of Honor? Nope, I'm still an independent contractor. Okay, gotcha. Because no. you were you were at a, you were at the closing angle of the pay per view this past Friday. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Well, yeah. There there will be uh more things to come, but right now, like I, I, people are thinking I'm trying to work them, but no, I'm I'm not signed to them at all. Okay, well, that's surprising because again, it seems like you were put kind of in a main event storyline here at the uh, at the end of the pay per view. Do you think it's a situation where um, more more moves will be made post pandemic? Do you think when when things are a little bit more normalized, we can see more more signings or or events or whatever it may be? Yeah. Um. Yes. Uh, like I know for a fact that like everybody keeps like you know harping on uh, Ring of Honor, like oh why aren't you guys doing this? Why aren't you that? But like. In reality, it's not the guys that are in Ring of Honor that have the authority to do that. It's Sinclair Broadcasting. They own Ring of Honor. Right. So they're the ones say, hey, uh, do this, do that. Uh, you can sign people this time. Like, I know there's a set date that they're, they're uh, having a conversation with Sinclair. Be like, okay, uh, we can start talking about uh, actually signing people, new people. Yeah. Now, granted, if like, because Andrade just got released and stuff like they're going to make an exception for him if they get a chance to i know that for a fact but like tony deppin no they're not going to make they're, they'll fucking wait well they'll wait it out well look you're already there he ain't there but i i mean while you brought him up though i mean yeah so what do you know so what is this it's you brody dickinson and homicide right this yep. is, do you guys have a name for the crew yet uh, violence is on un, violence unlimited it's a good name. I'm very scared of that. So, but like you guys got in there right away with the foundation and uh, Los Ingobernables. Yeah, Roosh is there. Andrade was like a founder of Los Ingobernables. You think there's a, a chance he, he winds up back in back in Ring of Honor or with Ring of Honor for that reason or no? Um, I could see it happening. Do I know if it's gonna happen? No. I know he is close with Roosh, Dragon Lee, and his father. I know that much. Best Bestie. Mm -hmm. So like that may. be be an influential thing that uh drives andrade there however when it comes down to it everybody's gonna look at the dollar senses mm -hmm. you know but if it if andrade comes that's gonna be a huge score for ring of honor and that like it a uh, world-class athlete and it'd be amazing if he actually comes there but yeah we don't know yeah well and that's the thing is like i say like it seems like you were positioned here really well at the top of the card you know brody has always been somebody they've relied in and stuff uh, you came up a little short in the pure championship tournament there, I know, but you, obviously the foundation was in the ring there. That's kind of been a big part of what they're doing. Uh, do you see that as like a, a division that you would would excel at, or, or like where do you see your goals and strengths in Ring of Honor right now? Um, well, to be honest, um, pure wrestling, like I like it, but it's not not really. I, I like to have a, a hybrid style of wrestling and I'm not saying I'm a hybrid wrestler, but I just like to do a lot of different, like I, I like the pure stuff, but I don't want my entire match to be dictated around that. I don't, it's not for me. Me personally, I, I want to work within the uh, television title tournament, uh, not tournament, but um, division, which I am currently in. Yeah. And I believe I'm uh, second in the rankings for, for that. So yeah. like, that's yeah. my concern. Like I let, uh, 
pure, I don't know, let uh, let Dickinson take care of that stuff in, in, out of our group. I'll, I'll stick with the television title. That's what I like. I, I like I, I like slowly building wrestling and then having balls to the wall match, not it's just a slow build to the entire time and the finish is like abrupt. Yeah, for sure. Well, I, Dan Housen uh, recently told me he was after that TV title too, you know? Yeah, well, uh, I'll, I, I can beat Dan Housen, so I'm not worried. Well, I, I, I don't know. I'll tell him that. We'll, we'll see what comes of it. So oh, I'll tell him. I told him that last week when I saw him. <laughs> All right. Anyway, Tony, I really I've been looking forward to chatting with you for a while, man. Uh, you seem like a really cool dude. And the fact that the first five minutes blew by with us just talking about brewing beer, I mean, delivered on my expectations, 100 um, percent for I'd love to chat with you down the road again, bring you back. But but for now, wh- what do you want to plug, promote, put over for Beer House? What on the card do you uh, you think fans should be excited about? How can they watch uh, all those great things? I'm excited for uh, Braden Lee versus Ace Austin. I feel like they're very like Ace is. Obviously, at the top of his game, working with the uh, impact a lot and yeah. stuff. But I feel like Braden, uh, uh, Braden will be. Br- I can't. How do I pronounce his name? Braden. I don't remember. Braden Lee. Braden. Yeah, I think it's Braden Lee. Yeah, Braden, Braden Lee. Braden. Braden. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel like he's ace a couple years ago, and I've known Ace probably longer than anybody that knows him because he, him, and I wrestled from the same area, so. Did you ever like I've known him? I've known him since day one almost. Did you ever get to see him do musical theater? No, no, Bummer. no. Bummer. But like wrestling wise, like we we're in the same area all the time. So, okay. like I'm excited for that match. I'm really excited for Matt Vertigo and Myron Reed. Uh, I really believe in Matt Vertigo. Um, and I, out of everybody that was on the card, I wanted to make sure I got him on the show, and that's all I cared about because I've known Matt for almost ten years. So I was just like, okay. I was like, and I told him, I was like, I will make sure you get to the show. I'm like, I will find a way. And I found a way. And then the only, like, uh, he's like, oh, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. I was like, yeah, enough of the talk. Just, just deliver. Like, that's all I want out of you. Yeah, dude. Well, you gave me a great but, opponent there. Dude, Myron Reed's one of the best right now, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. He told me Myron was one of his matches he wanted. And uh, I had Myron on the show anyways. I was like, fuck it. I was like, that's what it's going to be. Yeah, yeah, he's both- like, are you serious? I was like, yeah, let's do it. Just, I'm like, just deliver i was like that's all i ask and you got the other half of injustice uh jordan uh, jordan oliver is going to be on the show as well right yep jordan versus jd J- Dr- jd drake will be my main event i'm really looking forward to that because it's a really good, real big style splash yeah yeah that'll be great man all right and this is all going to be streaming uh it's going down on april 10th and people can watch it on IWTV. right what time does uh what time does it air and everything like that? it'll be at 12 o'clock on saturday uh the 10th and i'm not sure everything is going through with the ship but um for every view that we do get, we will be donating money towards a charitable foundation for uh, children abuse, uh, children that have been affected by abuse. That's, because that's... I feel like, in my opinion, because like when I took the reins of this show, I felt it was the right thing to do. Like, I don't want, I'm, I'm not making any money out of this, like the show at all. Like IWTV said they, 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 they could pay me. And I was just, like, as like a me booking the show and I was like I don't want it like I don't want the show as some way for me to make money because that's my that's the last thing in my mind like it sucks doing this entire show like I constantly have people hitting me up and having to book things and make sure the finances are there but I just want people to have a show and I want them to be able to rest like all a lot of these kids are kids that never get seen and I want them to be seen so it's the least I could do because Hell, maybe next year I won't be on the indies and I can't give back to the indies anymore. And I'd like to do as much as I possibly can while I'm here.